going on, Jerome? It's a beautiful Tuesday. Birds are chirping and stuff, and it's time for another Vikings news dump. And so I, I know that Quasi has been criticized. You know, first two years on the job, uh, him not coming from a traditional scouting background, more of an analytics, new age, uh, money ball perspective. But you, you really can't deny the leadership and fortitude that he's shown during this off season, right? Uh, staring, uh, having a staring contest with Kurt cousins and making Kurt to blink uh, the way that he dealt with the Daniel Hunter situation over the last three off seasons. Uh, and I, it was the most transformative offseason in team history. Uh, drafting J.J. McCarthy, getting Diamond Dallas Turner, having a great free agent class, uh, clearing up a ton of cap space uh, both for this year, uh, even though they have 57 plus million dead uh, due to void year cap, it's coming home to roost, uh, but also for the future. And everything is bright. Oh, oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. Taking care of Justin Jefferson, right? So I, I think that Quasi and Kevin O'Connell should be in line for an extension. I, I don't think they should be on the hot seat. You know, give, given uh, what's happened this offseason. Now, if they had run it back with Kurt, if they're running back with Daniil, uh, if Jefferson hadn't been extended, then then I think hot seat would have been fair game. But uh, I, I believe that the competitive rebuild is complete. And now the Vikings are ascending with it, one of the, the youngest and hungriest teams in the league. And, and Kwesi should be around to see that through. So I think that Kwesi uh, and Kevin O'Connell uh, should be extended a long time. That's right, man. Also, Quasey doesn't get uh, enough love because we talk about uh, Kevin O'Connell as a hat model. Quasey looks good too, man. Yeah. Anyways, next. Uh, speaking of the quarterback of the future, uh, this is from per the Purple Persuasion. Dan Graziano on Sports Center. Always talking junk about McCarthy. Uh, if JJ McCarthy hits certain benchmarks, blah, 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 blah. Quote The Vikings have a detailed and specific uh, developmental plan tailored to JJ McCarthy. If McCarthy hits certain benchmarks by certain dates, uh, sure, he could be the week one starter, but if not, they're happy to go with Sam Darnold until JJ McCarthy is ready. Now, th this isn't news. Uh, this is something that uh, Kevin O'Connell has talked about extensively uh, every single day. Uh, there are things that McCarthy needs to learn and grow and show, and uh, boxes he needs to check, and benchmarks he needs to hit but I, I mean you know initially I was just like all right it's gonna be Darnold Joe no matter what but what if McCarthy comes in and just rips the cover off the ball like he's got all the tools and obviously he's putting in the work over summer uh summer break uh you know, throw it at Thielen Thielen wants to come back by the way like everything is lining up where Thielen just like please let me in let me in uh, uh, but you know with McCarthy who says that he can't win the job? And that's not an aspersion on Darnold or Mullins or Jaron Hall or any, anything like that. What if McCarthy just comes in and proves that he's that mofo? It's not out of the realm of possibility. And that's something to watch for. Because uh, even though I still think that yeah, if, if I had to put a couple of jelly beans on it, I, I would bet on Sam Darnold being the week one star, starter as I get choked up and die. Uh, but... No, nah, I, I think McCarthy's going to have a puncher's chance. And I, I think that even though the plan is to redshirt him, I, I think that Kevin O'Connell will, will give him an opportunity to uh, potentially show what he's got. Also opportunity, day late, uh, a, a Canadian dollar short, but uh, happy Canada Day. I, I always thought it was interesting. So Canada Day is on July 1st, and uh, 4th of July is obviously er, on 4th of July. Uh, but also, can do you know Canada has like their own Thanksgiving? Which I guess I guess makes sense, but what do you have to be thankful for? You're cold, anyways. But uh, see, here's what I understand. So obviously the Vikings are popular in Canada. I have a lot of Canadian friends that are Vikings fans, hardcore. Definitely gonna add for things. Shout out to D Money. But how are the Vikings not the team of Canada, right? Especially given our connection with Bug Rant, uh, who is still CFL royalty. What he did with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I mean, how how is that not a thing? Like. So uh, Canadian fans are sort of all over the spectrum. Ironically, there's a lot of Canadian Patriots fans, which is just really funny to me. You know, a, a lot of Seahawks too, uh, especially you know on, on the West Side, BC, Vancouver area. But that makes sense. But how are we we not? How are we not the team of the rest of uh, Canada? Hmm? Bills Mafia, I'm sure, uh, is a little bit in there as well, especially since they're so close geographically. And there's also t uh, they they even played a couple home games in Toronto in the six, but. Now, we, we need to establish this. Like, we need to be the team of the Midwest. We need to be the team of Canada. We need to be the team of Brazil. We need to be the team of everything, man. That's all. I mean, the Vikings went, went around, uh, historically, uh, historical Vikings went around and conquered the world. Plus, I mean, the Vikings landed in Canada, literally. So, I feel like we should get some credit. 
Like Newfoundland and Vinland should be Vikings territory. That's all, man. That's all. Anyways, uh, so coming up uh, is College Football 25 is going to be dropping here uh, this month. So a lot of people are going to be preoccupied. Now, I, I respect people who really get into video games. I can't do it anymore. Like, even when I was a kid, like playing a ton of Madden, playing a ton of, uh, you know, like Call of Duty or uh, you know, uh, Modern Warfare, all that stuff. I, I, and I just can't do it because like, I, I would sit there and play for like two, three hours. Then I'd be like, oh. What, what am I doing with my life? And th- that was me at like 14, when it should be like prime video game years. But I, I'm really fired up for the people who are fired up. It's been a long time coming uh, because of bureaucracy and ridiculousness uh, that there hasn't been an NCAA football game since 2013. Uh, so... They're going through the ratings uh, of the teams compared uh, from this year's version versus the last year. It came out 2013 NCAA football 14, which how come they always scale up a year? They never made sense to me with uh, the NCAA games or, uh, you know, 2K or Madden. But uh, uh, but in uh, EA uh, College Football 25, Georgia, Georgia, numero uno, Alabama down at four used to be number one. At ni- Alabama used to be a 99 back in 2013. I guess that makes sense. Uh, the Ohio State checks in at two. Oregon. Oh, man. What was Oregon doing in 2013? Was that prime Ch- Chip Kelly, like Michael James and DeAnthony Thomas, Black Mamba era? Uh, Dennis Dixon. Uh, he was a little bit before that. Um no, Joey Harrington before that, too. Yeah. Uh, but uh, see, Clemson is still up there. Texas, don't mess with Texas. Uh, so Texas at five with the 92, but they were seven with the 93 back in the day. Notre Dame still hanging in there. Uh, Virginia Tech, man, Virginia Tech sort of had a fall off, especially after they lost Derisaw. Mm. Uh, LSU, Skull SU uh, still representing. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, a lot really hasn't changed, uh, you know, except Georgia really rising up. Because where were they? I mean, Georgia had some really good years under Mark Richt, except they just could never get it done. Uh, but you know, Kirby Smart has definitely been t- doing the damn thing, so respect there. Where's Michigan? I mean, J.J. McCarthy leaves, and all of a sudden you're out of the top eight? For shame. They got talent, man. Absolutely. Hmm. Speaking of talent, as I get choked up again. So Chris Carter uh, and, and the Vikings working with the Salvation Army. So uh, initially it was like, Anything CC is involved in, I, I am in. Also, Salvation Army does a lot of fantastic things uh, for the homeless. Um, you know, food shelves, clothing, all, all, all that stuff. It, it's really good to uh, help the underserved in our community. And, and then, then I saw what it was. So they're doing a down for the challenge, finding homelessness, uh, repelling for a cause. So you're going to be repelling off of the Omni Hotel uh, at TCO Performance Center Bar and Grill. Uh, I'm out. Uh, but if people want to do it, like I will write a check. But I I, I can't do heights, man. I, I I just can't do it. And I, so I'm weird with heights, where I'm perfectly fine with heights that will kill me. So like on a mountain, on, on a cliff, I'm perfectly fine. Or in an airplane, no problem. But if I'm like on a ladder, and if I fall, like I'm just gonna get messed up. You know, I have a compound fracture. Uh, you know, be maimed. Like that's where I have issues, and you're repelling down the, down the building. Like I feel like at at the precipice up at the top, I'd be fine because if I fell, I would die. But once I I get down to like four stories left, and if it gets to, to the part where uh, my belayer like uh, you know decides to go out to lunch or I don't know like a carabiner snaps, and like I fall four stories, that's probably not gonna kill me, but. Uh, that, that, that's where I get uneasy. Uh, again, it's a completely irrational fear, but it's okay. Yeah, but uh, like I said, hey, l- let me know if anyone is going to be doing this challenge, and uh, I will throw a couple bucks your way. Uh, but I will not be climbing down. Although producer Ali is probably going to make me climb down now, isn't she? Damn, damn that, damn that woman. Anyways, next. Uh, oh, speaking of damn. So, oh. This doesn't seem like it is 20 years ago, yeah, the, the viral Greg Jennings video. Greg Jennings. Also, uh, kind of problematic that Darren Sharper is in that video, too. But anyways, but yeah, Greg, Greg Jennings, a former Vikings legend for like two seconds. Um, so he, he was doing up an AMA on the old Twitter machine. Uh, someone asked him, who is the guy you've been around that you felt was underappreciated and never got the praise they truly deserved? Hashtag AMA Jennings 85. So ask me anything Jennings 85. 
Uh, and and, he, and uh, Greg Jennings says Antoine Winfield Sr., which respect. I mean, Antoine Winfield Sr., pound for pound, is probably the toughest player in NFL history. And I think that he is one of the most underrated defensive players. Like, he never got the the all pro uh, love. He never got racked up and stacked up the Pro Bowls like he should have. But he was just a dog, man. Like he was so damn tough. He set the tone. And great leader. And I I love Winfield Senior, man. So um, you know, respect to Greg Jennings. I mean, he he only played with Winfield Senior for a hot second. Uh, but of course, being in division and being on opposite sides of the ball, they they've met uh, a time or two. And also, it's funny because th- this Ned. Schneebly guy was probably fishing for uh, Packers compliments. Nope. That's right. That's right. And again, everyone talks about how the Vikings screwed up with Kyle Hamilton. I still say that even though Jeff, the Jeff Gladney ma- pick made sense in 2020, rest in power, but how they fumbled Winfield Jr., who went to Eden Prairie High School, who was a golden gopher who is a legacy and you definitely needed help in that secondary and Winfield Jr. is an all pro in his own right and he was just there I mean could you imagine the 2020 draft where you end up with Jefferson at 22 and Winfield Jr. at 25 if you hadn't traded down uh, for the Niners come up for Ayak or at 31 man baby I mean come on that that, that would have been a historic draft but is what it is. Uh, also is what it is. So uh, the, the Hawk Tua girl, her 50 minutes of fame has been extended, w- which is fun. So she's making the rounds, doing podcasts and all that stuff. Uh, Sam Darnold apparently uh, shooting a shot, James Harden style, heart emoji. Hawk Tua girl's first uh, ever interview. Although that's not technically true. I mean, the first video was her first interview, wasn't it? Yeah, it doesn't matter. But either way, uh, so the problem with Sam Darnold isn't talent, is that sometimes uh, he, he – he throws the ball where it shouldn't be going to the other team. That's a problem, man. But, hey, respect. He's going to take shots downfield. And so there you go. Hmm. Lastly, so story time. So Marcus Sherrill's, uh, again, a lot like Winfield Sr., uh, pound for pound is one of the best Vikings in team history. Like he was you know, like a buck 70, soaking wet. He's like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, and uh, Sherrill's, I mean, Sherrill's is a great story. So John Marshall High School, Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, go Rockets, and then walk on with the Gophers, and then a UDFA tryout, not not UDFA, UDFA tryout with the Vikings rising up. And for a, a while, it was 1-2 Devin Hester and Marcus Sherrills as the best two punt returners in the game. And I will firmly stand by that. Go, go look up his uh, average per return. Like he, Marcus Sherrills was so extremely underrated for so many years, and uh, it was so funny too. Every single offseason, uh, a significant amount of Vikings fans are like, this is the training camp that Marcus Sherrills gets replaced. Hmm. Uh, but long story longer, so uh, I met Marcus Sherrills uh, in Rochester. Uh, we lived there for a hot second, and you know, obviously he's a Rochester native. We're, we're waiting in line at the Hy-Vee Deli. And so, again, Marcus Sherrills is not that tall. Like he's like I, I'm like 5'7", five, 5'8", five, and he's probably like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, so I was just looking at him, I was like, you kind of look like Marcus Sherrills. He's like, yeah, yeah, Marcus Sherrills. And you know, we, we had a, you know, how you make small talk when you're waiting in line to get your cold cuts. It's basically what happened. And you know, so I could have been like full on like Chris Farley fanboys, like, hey, 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 remember when you returned that punt for a touchdown? That was awesome. But nah, uh, super chill, super respectful. Uh, and Sherrills, like, he's the guy who who gives a lot back to the community. Uh, but you know, he doesn't want credit. He's super quiet, super. I mean, he's just a, a really good dude. And uh, I feel like in the pantheon of Vikings greats, I mean, h- how he's not hyped up like like a CJ Ham or uh, Adam Thielen's, like, I don't care. Like, local guy done good, gopher, walk on. I don't know. Like, may- maybe it's just because he was so quiet and his his style of play was so understated and he never sought the, the spotlight. Maybe that could be it. It's possible, man. But also, I mean, his brother Mike, a great coach for uh, the Gophers, had some health issues. Hopefully he's good to go. But, yeah, Mark, the marvelous Marcus Sherrills is a badass, man. It's like, low-key, low oh, it, it's the offseason. So I, I should do up my official 2024 offseason all-time Vikings list because Sherrills probably is in the top 15, which is saying a lot. 
So respect there. But uh, that's it. That's at uh, Vikings News Dump for this beautiful Tuesday. You guys are the best you know what to do. Skull production value.